Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the TJR Auto Channel. My name is Tyler, and I'd like to start today's video off by hopping in Holly, heading down the highway, and going to a junkyard. Alrighty, so this car is going to be the donor for our dual exhaust, which is nice because the axle is already torched out of it and the cat's already removed, so that'll be nice. And special guest in today's video, look who's back. Doing the dirty work. He loves you me. Know who to call. So we're going to be stealing That's the out. carpet out of this car and hopefully the passenger seat out of it as well. And then uh, this car had a uh, non-power driver's seat. That blue Vic over there does have a power driver's seat in mint shape, so hoping to snag that as well. One tail pipe. A moldy car swamped by heels. He don't have a swivel head. He don't have a ratchet and wrench. I'm going a 16th turn at a time while I'm getting my face beaten up. Look, look at that. Bolt, dude, look. You want to see how much I'm doing? Here, look. Nice. Oh, look, I'm almost home. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh, wow. I'm sorry, Michael. I know how to treat my guests. <clears throat> Watching the motor is going to be blown in this seat. No, Tyler didn't want the manual seat. Alrighty, folks well as you saw we got the seats cleaned up pretty damn good they actually came out nice they don't smell weird or anything i've had them sitting out here for probably four or five days now just air drying so i'd say they're definitely safe to uh throw into the car so got to work at getting these seats out of the car get the bottom of the rear seat out and then i think i'm gonna have to pop both of the front seat belt bolts uh to be able to get the rubber carpet in and then from there we can get a whole cut for the shifter and seats and all that jazz so Let's cross our fingers and hope that the uh, power functions work on this driver bucket. Ooh, baby. So I'm a little puzzled right now. I'm uh, looking at the bottom of Bonnie's seat, right? And I did disassemble that seat and everything basically looks like I, I see no reason as to why I can't take this seat rail you know this bottom with this motor I think that is and this entire harness and just swap it to the Crown Vic bucket um, I, I really don't see a reason why I can't I mean this main connector is different but if I was to swap the harnesses and the seat bottom I don't see how that would have any different movements compared to this one I think it's primarily this like motor over here and this motor. I think those are the main guys, I'm assuming. And then like you have the plug for like the uh, seat belt. I don't know if this thing has an airbag in it. Maybe that's, an, maybe that's a side airbag. I, I really have no clue, honestly, what I'm doing. I probably shouldn't be touching this at all. But I guess we're going to try to take this seat apart and see if we can swap some components there. And then we'll test fit it in the car, see if we're able to get the seat to work properly. If that's the case, then we're good to go.
We have the rail, motors, and the whole wiring shebang swapped onto the Crown Vic seat from the Grand Marquis bench. Now, there's two big differences that I did notice with this. One is this airbag thingy over here. The Marquis actually has a wire running up. It looks like it goes into the back of the seat, so I'm not sure if that's like a shoulder bag, like a shoulder airbag in like this area, which would kind of make sense because it's a 09, and I read online that 09, 09s and up do have seat airbags. So this guy right here runs up, and it looks like it goes somewhere yonder up into the back of the seat. So the Crown Vic police seat from this car, which I think was a pre-05, uh, did not have anything else. It basically just had this yellow wire, which the marquee seat did have, but then the Crown Vic seat had this little like, uh, it almost, I I'm almost thinking this is like a resistor to just basically trip out the airbag light. So I'm hoping that's the case so I don't have to ride around with an airbag light, but everything else plugged in. So aside from the airbag situation, the other thing was the seatbelt buckles. The Crown Vic seatbelts look like this. It's basically just a rectangle, right? Where the uh, seatbelt would actually bolt and be held in. The Grand Marquis one has notches in it and fits differently. It's also a little bit different of a length. So uh, this guy's just kind of sticking up where it needs to be and hopefully that works fine. But the seatbelt buckles themselves are actually different. So this will not go into here. Right, so Crown Vic, you know, I think this is, like I said, 2005 or a little bit before that, uh, will not plug into an 09 seatbelt buckle, or seatbelt, I should say. But obviously, Bonnie's buckle will plug right into the seatbelt like it always has. So let's throw the seat into the car, let's put power to it, and let's see what happens. It's definitely weird seeing a uh, bucket seat in the car for a change, but it's plugged in. I have it stuck onto the back two studs, so it really can't move far. Let's see what happens. All right, so this is going to be pushing forwards. Holy shit. All right, backwards. Oh my lord, it works. Wow. I'm actually kind of surprised it was that easy. I was expecting it to be a lot harder. Uh, I've never really played with like seats before. Oh, there she is, doing a wheelie. All right, so I'll move it about there. So, what about, let's go up with this. Oh, dude, I think we have all of it. I think we're good. Can I bring the front up? No? Oh, I can bring it down. Oh, dude, this is, this is great. Oh, this is phenomenal. Sounds a little scary, probably because that had a lot of water damage to it, but it's fine. It's okay. All right, well, we have a Crown Vic bucket seat, or at least the driver's side. Now, I'm not going to bother testing if the airbag light um, is on the gauges or not, because there's basically nothing I can do about that at the moment, at least. I'm sure, like most cars, you can jump out the uh, like the little resistor, or you can put a little resistor in the line, and it'll trick it and think to think that there's actually an airbag in the seat. I'm not really too worried about it. At the worst, we'll have an airbag light. At the best, we don't have an airbag light, and now we just don't have an airbag in the seat. So I could really give two shits less, but I can get the seat pulled back out. I'm gonna have to do the same to this seat. I'm pretty sure that uh, there is a plug that was going to it. Even though that's not a power seat, I guess I'll pop, you know, pop the bottom up, see what the differences are and kind of go from there. But at the minimum, I do need to swap over the seatbelt.
been a couple days since I've done the P71 seats and the rubber floor swap in the Bonnie. And so far, so good. Honestly, it's so much more comfortable than the, hopefully it's in frame, the old bench seat. I mean, the, the foam was just so worn and just, it was beyond uncomfortable, you know, like it, just doing like a 30 or 40 minute ride in the car, your, your ass was hurting, your back was kind of bothering you. Now, super, super comfy. So after I did the seat swap, I actually took the car about a 40 minute ride out west and I got myself something pretty cool that uh, supposedly will go right in between those seats. And that being the best crackhead spec Ford Explorer console. Now, uh, I don't think the camera really do it justice, just how nasty this thing is. Um, I actually got stuck pulling this out of a vehicle. I was under the impression that the guy I bought it from, or was buying it from at the time, I figured he would have pulled it out of the vehicle, but uh, he didn't. So I had to do it at nighttime with his tools, which were very minimal. And uh, the only warning he gave me when I went to reach into the vehicle to pull this out was, be careful where you put your hands, because I found needles in this vehicle earlier. So yeah, I wasn't too stoked about that, but I got it for 50 bucks. And uh, any other part out yards wanted like 125, 150. Granted, though, those were in clean vehicles and they were already pulled. So one of those things you got to weigh the options of. But I'm going to glove up. I'm going to scrub the living shit out of this thing. And then we're going to throw it in the car. So after a lot of soap and a lot of scrubbing, this, uh, this is actually not a biohazard anymore as far as I can tell. So cleaned up pretty nice. I'll show you guys. It does have some imperfections on... I think both sides of the console you can see there's just scratches and whatnot some discoloration on here i don't know if it was whatever soap i was using but there's also some discoloration on here which to me is not the end of the world i could really care less and then these cleaned up pretty nice um this was probably one of the nastiest things i think i've ever had to clean i was gagging half the time cleaning it because it was just ugh, so bad but i figure let me blow it off with some compressed air and we'll start test fitting it in the car so here is our first test fit and uh Fun first inspection. This thing fits ridiculously good. So if this was attached, it meets this body line pretty well, and I'm not too worried about back there. Can easily make a plate to go all the way up, kind of join it. This side is a little interesting because the floor vent is there. So maybe I could figure out a way to hook it up to that vent, and it actually will blow out on the floor. I don't know. Just food for thought. But this is in a beautiful spot. The cup holders back yonder open up nicely, but there is a little bit of clearance to the floor with these open. And this, it's kind of hard to see, but this is actually, instead of being flat, it's kind of sitting on an angle. So if I really wanted to, I could probably clearance the bottom of this a little bit to contour to the tunnel and be able to get the cup holders when they're open to sit on the floor, lower the back of this a little bit. It would, it would mess up the fitment a little up front, which again, isn't the end of the world. This is not just a direct bolt-in, but good enough that you probably could throw one of these in and just run it. Personally, I kind of want to make this a little bit nicer than just that. So we'll do a little bit of work to make it fit better. But shifting wise, pretty nice, pretty nice. If we look at this roughly in line with where it's going to go, actually, it's going to be up a little bit more. The shifter lands perfectly into this cubby area. So what I think I want to do is cut out a good chunk of this to be able to get the shifter through it so we can actually get a nice test fit with everything in place and kind of go from there. Well, this is uh, the finished result for now of doing the center console swap into this car with the buckets. I honestly think it looks killer and it is so much nicer to drive with this setup versus with these. So we're good. I'm happy with it. Uh, currently, I have the console scooch super far forwards so that I could trim everything out and get the shifter to go through it. Now, this isn't horrible looking. This is, the console is a lot shorter than uh, I was expecting. Everybody online said this fit really well. It needs the sides extended or something made there and, you know, stuff for here and around here, whatever. I'm not too worried about like the finishing touches. Uh, I also did take a notch out of the back here so that it would sit a little lower because earlier, I think I showed it was kind of on a angle, which I wasn't fond of, but it's comfy. It's nice. We have cup holders. Everything's good. All this storage now. But I'm still really not a fan of how this shifter is now with the console. So I need to get a parts list together. I would like to move the console back and also move the shifter back a couple inches. And I think overall it'll be nicer looking, more comfortable, and yada, yada, yada. So that'll definitely be a future video. But 
Now, Bonnie is in her favorite position, which is up on jack stands. So what we're gonna be doing today, and probably is gonna be wrapping up this video, is trying to figure out how I can get this stock dual exhaust fit up to Bonnie. Uh, I didn't come with cats, and it did not come with mufflers because I cut them off the tailpipe. So let's get the old exhaust set up off, try to get this stuff fit and see where we're at. Just took the good old uh, parts rig out to grab some pieces for uh, little old Bonnie here. So I'm going to be like every other Crown Vic, Grand Marquis, Town Car guy. Slap some glass packs on this baby. This is my most uh, cheap and quickest option to get the exhaust like done today. If not, I was going to have to order stuff and wait for it. Nobody carries this 2-inch or 1-in-7-8 pipe anywhere local to me. And I had to drive between 45 minutes between two different stores to get these. Because no auto zones in the state of New Jersey carry more than one of the same muffler. Poor shit. Horrible design. We got some two and a quarter clamps and then a bunch of two inch clamps. So let me uh, mock this up under the car and I'll show you what I'm thinking. So starting from the front, I already have uh, me and Mike welded on like, a, I guess almost like a pipe adapter, if you will, onto the, I guess the cat pipe. I don't know what you'd want to call that. I deleted the secondaries a long time ago when I first did the five speed swap and uh, never put the secondaries or a full exhaust really on this car, but just basically manifolds, primary cat, then a little adapter. Then I have this pipe. I think it's two and a quarter. Slip fits over that. Those will be clamped there. And then this will be welded here. We're not going to talk about the uh, size difference there. That's fine. And then we have the factory Crown Vic P71H pipe going to some 26 inch glass packs because it YOLO, right? And then we go to the exciting part in my eyes, at least which is some factory tailpipes over the axle tails. Okay, I'm definitely not gonna show you guys this with the flash on, but it actually didn't come out too, too bad. I still gotta add a set of hangers right around the area of where the cherry bombs are, but everything's together. So let's fire this thing up and uh, see how many exhaust leaks I have. in the interior and let me tell you this thing is like it's like a world of a difference honestly it's so much smoother and quieter inside the cabin the exhaust is a little quieter than i'd like personally i'm i'm used to this car being like balls loud since i don't know probably four years ago so like four years i've had this car on and off the road it's always been crazy loud this is like what i've known this car as i think even in high school actually i had side pipes on this thing when i was like 17 so it, it's four or five years, something like that. So to actually have tailpipes on this thing again and have like a pretty nice exhaust, I call it, this thing is just so good. It, it, like I said, it's a bit quieter than I'd like inside the cabin, 
but when you get on it, even with the windows up and the AC rolling, you guys just heard it. it, it makes pretty good noise, honestly. And I know outside the car, it still definitely makes good noise. So Bonnie's not completely in the skies, but now when we're just kind of slowly putting along like we are now, she's in the skies. We're in grandma mode. It's just a grandma car that's a little lower to the ground with some aggressive wheels on it because I did swap the 18s back on. If anybody wants to buy those 17-inch Mustang wheels, let me know. But overall, it, it's so much more comfortable in the interior with these seats and the center console. It, it just, it feels like a different car. It, it really does. And for the minimal amount of money that we spent, I'll put a tally up on the screen of how much the junkyard parts were and how much I spent total on the exhaust, just to be like completely blunt with you guys. It really wasn't that much money for the amount of difference that we made. So I am super stoked about it. Um, I'm very, very happy, honestly. It, it's so good to love driving this car again. It's honestly been a long time since I've been like drooling to be able to go drive this car. I'm at the point now where I genuinely love being behind the wheel of this car. And there's still plenty of things I wanna do. I definitely wanna do a relocated shifter, move the center console back, do the finishing touches to make the center console, you know, match up to the dashboard nicer. And th there's a handful of things, you know, whenever you're working on a project car, there's always a million things that you find that you would like to improve on and make better and all that kind of jazz. So as per usual, there's a laundry list of things that I would like to do, but we are definitely going in the right direction. And as we stand, this car is amazing. And I am so damn happy to be able to say that and genuinely mean it, you know? I'm super happy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. And uh, if you guys missed that last video, if you guys would like to support the channel more than you already do, make sure to hit the link down below and grab yourself a TJR Auto sticker. It's a duo sticker. It has the GTO as well as the marquee on it. So I think it's pretty damn cool looking. And uh, I have one on each one of the cars and I also have one on my coffee mug and on my water bottle. And they go through daily abuse and so far they've been holding up well. So if you guys want to, grab a sticker down below. I truly do appreciate it. And as always, thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.